All right, let's get right into it here. Market is down 1.2%. On the S&P Nasdaq is also down 1.6. Semiconductor Dow held a little better today, 0.6%. Uh, small caps down, biotechs down, Apple, Google, Amazon, Nvidia, Microsoft, Tesla's got hit close to 6% there. Meta, Netflix down, Bitcoin, and these crypto mining stocks are down quite heavily here. Gold Silver Miners continues to make a run here to the upside. However, GDX is down today. I know that uh, VIX, uh, VIX popped today here. You know what? Where my VIX go? Let's put my VIX over here. VIX popped 10%, 11% today. Um, let's stay with SME 503 ETF. Spider! 65 minute chart. Here, so this is where we closed on Friday. All right, that's where we close on Friday. Uh, really though what happened was that was where we had the gap area here i deleted that gap so you can see but first of all what i wanted to do let's do this so you understand okay see so we understand 518 515 gap area here but we also had a gap here you see see that so that that's the gap area that's you see so you, we talked about that in the last video that's where we close right above it right and then he threw a like hammer candle there right there see that long lower wick body there uh at the top of his uh of his candle there and pretty much shaved top definitely qualifies as a uh, hammer candle right on the support right the gap area what happened was initially gapped up it gapped up this morning this is where we open but it ran into the down gap area here as you can see so just by observing today's price action you can kind of see who's in control, right? Because there's a down gap, right? This was an up gap. Again, at before the you know third and fourth hour today. So it was the battle of the gaps, right? That's an up gap. That's a down gap. So it's not a coincidence. It's not a random occurrence. It's not a. It's not a mistake that. It, when the market came down on Friday, it came down right to it and we found support. When we gapped up right to that down gap area, we faded down. And not to mention, we got my midterm moving out in that vicinity. So it's sort of like a double resistance because that midterm has been working extra hard here to support the seller. That's a dotted blue there. And again, coinciding with that. Uh, down gap area so this is where you can kind of see okay we had an up gap we found support through a hammer we see it we see another gap up i mean in the last five months we've seen price action like this and normally what happens is that up gap is sustained and then bulls continue to march higher today something changed for the first time in a long time because the bulls have a lot of up gaps we're going all the way back to november lows last year this is the first down gap that has been sustained no i don't believe it every down gap attempts have been met with bulls running into it and feeling it very very quickly like usually next day today bulls tried it just one more time not not with the just like a run-up first we the gap was protected and then we gapped up and that's a pretty sizable up gap normally what we would see is continuation and filling the down or filling the down gap so you can see this down gap is now protected ladies and gentlemen boss bears have established their first 
Boss Bear Command Center. They tried it last week. Remember right here? This, uh, this abrupt down gap. They tried it and quickly got filled. They tried it once again. And this time, Bulls went to attack it. It failed. And when it failed, it failed very, very fast. And so now, with that rejection, right on that gap area, you see that the first, not only the first hour, the opening gap was filled, bears came down, filled this gap from February. So two gaps was filled. So we're dealing with something, something of a character that we haven't seen really since the early November of last year. This kind of a character we haven't witnessed since the, this entire run-up. Huh? So this gap is sizable up gap. You can see this gap, it's much bigger, almost like 2.5 times bigger than this one. And this one also has island up gap on top of it. Perfect. So this one does have sort of that presence. This is going to be where, you know, bulls are um, trying, they're going to try to protect this. And I'm going to say this, if this gap, if this gap is protected, a minimum portion of it, bulls still got a chance. And I'm not going to say we're going to go back to all time high yet, but bulls got a chance at least for another battle with the boss bears in the command center or on 515, 518. And I, obviously, it's going to be a difficult work because you see all these moving averages coming down. They're all been reprogrammed to support the sellers. So as the bulls trying to, let's say if we do see a bounce, as trying to get up to re-battle with the boss bears at 5.18 and 5.15, it's, it's like going against the stream going in, you know, swimming upstream, right? It's, it's going to be a difficult road because of all these moving averages that are coming down. What bulls need to dodge, ladies and gentlemen, is a down gap, a down gap. If, this, if we see like a big sizable down gap tomorrow morning, bulls are in big trouble, at least, uh, you know, for the month of April and possibly in going into May. So that's pretty big. That's pretty big. Going, I mean, gapping down 1.5%, very much possible. Bears can do this. Bears known to do some crazy things like that. If bears sort of turn this entire thing into an island top, which <laughs> that island top could put, we could, if we see an island top, yeah, bears are going to go eat away a lot of that rally that we've seen since early November last year. So that's what bulls need to um, dodge tomorrow. And if we see like a like a like a 0.5 percent like gap down, it, it bulls because it's, it's not the entire. That's why the, it's the size of this gap matters. So if we see like 0.5 percent down gap, bulls can still use this gap area support and bring it back up and fill it. You see, perfect. Let's check out that oscillator. All right, so you can see it. this is the first time, ladies and gentlemen. We've been talking a lot about uh like the oscillator levitation and all that stuff right where the oscillator elevates and levitate at the top of his band and then all of a sudden we started not seeing it it's just sort of like zigzagging at the you know up and down and now for the first time since the pretty much january or the november of last year that oscillator is now tamed Bulls have not, since this entire month, Bulls have not gotten back to the top of his band. You see that? Nope. Nope. It's now at the bottom of his band. And you see the character change versus when this thing is at the top of his band. Right here, you see the character. Bullish character, top of his band. Bearish character at the bottom of his band. Again, he fails to go and stay at the top of his band. 
So that's why even with the gap up that we've seen this morning, Bears were, they had a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? The momentum has shifted. And that's why I think Bears had that, that downtrend momentum, again, in short to micro term downtrend, to fade that up gap that we've seen this morning. And that's why we got to that gap area, right? And also, you have to understand, you could say, well, yeah, aren't we oversold? And you could argue that possibly, yes. But when we're, when the oscillator's tamed to the downside, sort of like what it could do in a, during an uptrend where oscillator can sort of stay elevated and then it can grind higher. So it could grind. Oscillator don't have to just pop back up. It could get stuck here. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? And who knows how many days? Could be this entire week. And during that time, can the bears make a smooth to the downside? Yes. Just like how bulls have done that here. Um, as of today, uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done uh, before I could say uh, the, the sentiment, the overall sentiment, the micro short term has shifted back to bullish and bulls are ready to make that all time highs run. For that to happen, need to reclaim the micro term and all these moving averages and need to fill this down gap. So you see, it, there's a lot of resistance going for. So uh, there's going to be a whole lot of battle happening here. We're going to deal with the short to micro term bearish sentiment versus mid to long term bullish sentiment. All right. Only question is going to be then, OK, everybody's expecting that this market has gone up too fast, too much. We're going to see a correction. The question is how much? What are the levels that a lot of these long-term investors are looking to accumulate? Maybe even traders, right? Where are the levels people want to load up again? Wh which level is the market is going to allow us to buy the dip before the next leg run higher, right? Because I think it's too early to say the Great Depression 2.5 or 2.0 or whatever is coming because people have been saying that for many, many years and they missed out the biggest opportunities ever for how many years now? So we're not gonna say that. We're not gonna say Great Depression is coming. What we're gonna do, we're gonna observe the market, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna see what are the levels that is, is a good level for us to possibly accumulate, right? And how much of a drawdown are we gonna expect going for? I'm gonna come back for you. We'll reassess the situation. Asian Injury Evening Globe Train tomorrow.